I'm here with Australian actor Matt Doran, who is uh, most famous, from my perspective, for being an Aussie drug dealer in a Star Wars film. Um, I thought you were going to say Damo from Home and Away, but great, that's what I like to remember it as, the drug dealer from Star Wars. Oh, Fantastic. My entire research for this interview consists of trying to remember the name of your character from Home and Away. Yeah. Oh, oh the character from Home and Away? Yeah. Damien Roberts, you know, Irene's son, you know, the, the, the mad alcoholic. That was, yeah, that's my mum, you know. She's reformed now. She's, she's doing a lot better now. Apparently, she's got all these other kids. I don't, you know, doesn't look after her own kids, but yeah. apparently that's what's going on. I don't know. But much, much, much cooler was when I saw you in The Matrix with, uh, amazingly, a friend of my mum and dad's, Mr. Robert Taylor. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, yeah. I didn't actually have much to do with him, but um, the whole experience for me was a real eye opener. You know, uh, that's I was saying to someone else before. Uh, you know, reading the script, I knew it was going to be a fantastic film, but no one, I think really knew how big it was going to be you know so the fact that it was that it, it blew kind of out to what it was was a real surprise to me and, and just to be a part of such a, an, an awesome franchise was i mean you know being able to do star wars is one thing because i'm a big star wars fan but the matrix thing kind of sort of really took me by surprise and I, still to this day I'm, I'm absolutely wrapped that i could have been part of such a film well the matrix came from nowhere really i mean there was not that that genre didn't really exist maybe Alex Proyas's Dark City possibly was a bit like that. Robert Taylor said to me once that he said he felt like for the first time in his life he wasn't acting, he was just a human special effect. Was that how you felt some of the time? I could imagine why he would say that, but me, not, you know, I didn't have to do any of the crazy, like, Matrix moves at all. Because he, like he did the first bullet time on screen. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he did yeah. it before Hugo Weaving did it. That's right, yeah, yeah. And it, it looks really cool when he does it as well, you know, so... Um, no, for me, I mean, my stuff was more kind of more like, I guess, organic, you know, it was just really working with the uh, the actors at the time. And it wasn't long after, or before that that, that I'd, I'd, I'd done another film, which was my first sort of big American film called The Thin Red Line. But that being a war film, there were, you know, so many actors involved. And li it was literally like, you know, everyone was fighting for screen time because you got, you know, certain scenes where there'd be 300 people on set in the one shot, you know. So unless you were like up close to the lens then you were just basically a glorified extra you know so for me coming from the thin red line to going into something like the matrix where it was more closed in you know where we'd be doing like say the tasty wheat scene where it was like right this is the scene these are the actors you're working with and this is this is it let's go so for me i mean it was a much more a personal experience you know getting to work with with everyone as opposed to the thin red line you know where it's just kind of like a mad dash for the lens you know that was an in incredible film and now you've confirmed for me because i'm sure i had an argument with my wife where she said that guy was from home and away and then you were and, you, and then like the scene was over yeah, and yeah. i was like because she would know and i wouldn't know and i'm like no as, as if that's true that wouldn't <laughs> be true and now the guy's told me that's fantastic yeah, no, that, that is true yes what was it like working with the Wachowskis, who clearly have a vision that not many other directors have? Uh, they're, no, they're fantastic to work with. But again, because they, I mean, they'd done the film Bound, so they were, you know, well established already. And I, the film Bound, I mean, it has that classic look as well. Like you could see where they were going even after watching that, to how the Matrix turned out and their style of shooting film. Um, but as I said to someone else before, that you can, I don't know, because the Matrix was. An unknown thing then it was kind of very fresh you know so working on it everyone was kind of doing it together and going in blind but knew it was going to be something special whereas i don't know i mean me personally not because i wasn't in it but if i watch matrix two and three i mean it, you can kind of tell that it, to me it seems like i mean there's a lot more characters but you can also tell that i don't know it's got this vibe where everyone's like we're in a matrix film we're doing a matrix film you know what i mean but you can't see that in the first film it, it seems a whole lot more honest the characters seem a lot more honest and it's of course, I've got to ask you, how did you end up in one of the Star Wars prequels? Uh, I was, well, I was lucky enough to audition for the, uh, for the film. Well, I was over in America at one stage and I met the casting director over there and we just uh, had, a, had a chat, you know, about my background, what I've been up to and um, we, it kind of went from there and then I started reading for uh, particular characters uh, that were just based on voices really and drawings of CGI characters and um, I guess they tried to sort of from there worked out this character and it grew from there. You know. Chance of a lifetime. Matt Doran, thank you for being on Nerdzilla. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers, mate.